What's up, children of the sun? This is your metaphysical advisor, Montre Bible, and I will be doing a astrological and tarot reading for Capricorn for the month of August 2019. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's up, Capricorns? Uh, how are my goats doing uh, this month? Uh, let me get right to it. It is a Universal 11 month. Universal 11 month is good about manifesting and creating your reality. Uh, like I tell people before, when you're creating your reality on an 11th month, uh, it's something that you're not going to do by yourself. You have to make sure that you're with common linked people, okay? So uh, manifest your desires with people who are on the same vibration as you. Um, if you don't have that, maybe that's something you need to try to manifest in your life. On the 1st of August, there is a new moon in Leo, and that's happening in your 8th house. The 8th house uh, rules your finances, other people's monies, loans, stuff like that. It's money that people give you, not necessarily money that you make. So uh, it could be an inheritance or something of that nature. It also just rules any type of energy that exchanges between people. So it could be sexual energy. You may be going through a, a new phase in your sexual life, a new phase, uh, a new beginning in uh, maybe somebody who you have a sexual relationship with. This could be start a new start to that. You may be learning something new about your sexuality that you didn't know before. So that's pretty exciting. Um, on the 11th, Jupiter go, goes direct into Sagittarius, and this is going direct into your 12th house. This is the house of the subconscious, of your spirit life. Um, you may have been learning a lot of things about your spirituality um, lately. Uh, with Jupiter going uh, retrograde, it may have kind of paused for a time. Now, when Jupiter going direct in Sagittarius in your 12th house, you're going to start expanding your consciousness, your subconsciousness, your, your own, that deep part of yourself, the higher consciousness. Uh, you're going to start expanding that even more. There's still a lot of things that you you you're learning and it's opening your a, a whole new world. You know, that's what the song that comes into my mind. Uh, a whole new world is opening to you in your spiritual world, in your spirit life. And it's also it's going to uh, increase the amount of dreams that you may be having. Uh, your dreams might start getting really, really wild and vivid. Then Mercury enters into your eighth house. Mercury entering the eighth house on the same day also kind of tells me there, there could be a chance for... Um, some finance, some financial increase, uh, especially if it's coming from some other people. People might just want to give you money, uh, help you out, stuff like that. You may get some ways, start communicating with people who who can help you out. Um, also, Mercury in the eighth house mean, might mean that you are not only learning things about your spirituality with Jupiter going direct in the twelfth house, but with Mercury entering into your eighth house, you might start. Uh, Communicating more about your sex life, your sexuality with your partner, or uh, your mind might be more involved into the whole process. It's a very, the eighth house is very deep, you know, when it comes to sexuality. Because it's not just the mirror of being with somebody. You're trying to have this really deep connection with somebody. So when Mercury enters that area, not only are you on the sex side, not only are you being sexual with somebody, but it's, it's connecting with your mind as well. So that's a good place to be, too. So it's money and sex with Mercury going in that area. On the 12th, uh, Uranus is going retrograde in Taurus into your 5th house. Uranus has been trying to shake up your, your 5th house by just change, just kind of uh, bringing some excitement into uh, your romantic life. Uh, the 5th house is romance, is also children. Uh, so for some Capricorns, uh, your, the way your relationship with your children might have been really getting a little crazy and sporadic and just uh, your interaction with them. Uh, may be very unpredictable. For other um, Capricorns, it could be, if you don't have kids, it could be that your romantic life, people who you have feelings for has been crazy, you know, maybe you've been kind of attracted to somebody who's a little bit out of the box, and um, that might slow down a little bit with Uranus going retrograde in Taurus for the rest of the year. You're going to have some time to relax a little bit, get back to the kind of the, the norm in your life, and... Take some time to reflect on the past few months of maybe your romantic life and what's been going on with your romantic life. It's not going to stop for a while because Uranus will go direct again in, in next year. Uh, but when it does, this whole thing, 
this whole transformation of, of your romantic life and how you view romance is supposed to change your whole personality anyway. So get ready for it. <laughs> if you don't like change, then that's going to be hard. Just kind of go with the flow. But you're getting a break for the rest of the year. On the 15th, there's a full moon in an Aquarius into your second house. This means you may have a chance to make some more money. You might get some money on the full moon. And it may come in a weird way. <laughs> also, the second house rules your value system. Things that you value. I know Capricorns, you value pretty much money. <laughs> but uh, there might be you might get you might get some unexpected money on the on the full moon. So that's good. On the 18th, Mars moves into Virgo. Actually, a lot of energy, after the 18th, a lot of energy is moving into Virgo, into your ninth house. And your ninth house is your house of belief systems and learning. Same thing as Jupiter. So Mars is moving into Virgo, into your ninth house of beliefs and higher learning. Uh, the sun is moving into the ninth house on the 23rd. And Mercury is entering into the ninth house on the 29th. That's a lot of learning. I think you're going to be learning a lot of new things. I don't know, uh, Capricorn, what's going on. Are you going back to school? Are you taking a training? For some of you other Capricorns, you might be uh, having an experience, an online experience, or meeting somebody from uh, uh, another, another way of life, another culture. You might be interacting with somebody of that. With Mars... Moving in that area, if you're trying to go back to school, if you're trying to learn something new, you're going to be really gung-ho about trying to get that information. Mars is also about maybe you're trying to teach something because Mars is also is, a, is an assertive energy. So you might uh, be really just <clears throat> aggressive about teaching and sharing knowledge and stuff. And then the sun moves into that area and Mercury enters that area on the 29th. Mercury is about learning. So you, not only are you teaching and training, but I think you're also learning at the same time. This is a very strong energy. So you're gonna be wanting to do this near the uh, second half of the month, really teaching and learning a lot. Then there's a new moon in the ninth house. So there's a new opportunity. It could be an opportunity uh, to travel, travel to somewhere far. Um, it is the end of the summer. Uh, Capricorn. So if you haven't taken a break, if you haven't had a chance to uh, travel or go on a trip, I would say, hey, go ahead, take a chance, uh, especially around the 29th or 30th, the end of the uh, month, go ahead and try uh, to just take a sporadic trip somewhere, go out of town. It's a really good time to do that with Mercury going into the ninth house and then there's a new moon in your ninth house. Uh, really great time to take a, take, take a break, go somewhere far. If you want to, it's the end of the summer before everything, <laughs> before the holidays come back up and then you're really busy. Okay. All right. Let's go to the, let me look at the tarot real quick and see what the tarot has to say for you guys. We're going to do the animal oracles. I have new cards too. Whoops. I'm dropping my cards. My uh, chakra oracle cards. These are new. I love these cards. They're really great. Let's see what the animal oracles cards have to say for Capricorn for the month of August. Capricorn for the month of August. I'm going to shuffle again. And one more time. Capricorn. Month of August 2019. I have, everybody's getting this card. The Electric Eel Spirit. Bring your ideas to life. This seems to be a, a kind of a growing theme with a lot of um, a lot of signs. A couple of other signs got that card as well. Uh, it's about really being proactive. I think it's because it's in a universal 11th month. So if there's something that you've been trying to manifest in your life, then uh, now is the time to do it. I think it's a very powerful time for a lot of people for the universal 11 um, to create your reality, whatever you're trying to do. So for you guys... Because you have so much ninth energy, if you're trying to do something with your finances or teaching or traveling, this is the month to do it. Let's see what the uh, tarot has to say for Capricorn. I'm going to shuffle three times. One more time. Get my hands together. Capricorn. Or my fingers. Okay, Clark a lot. Capricorn. August 2019. 
August. The spirit has to say it for Kevin. Okay. All right. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords could be that there could there you could have been experiencing a lot of contention with another person, and uh, this contention, this this argument, has caused somebody to walk out of your life. Okay. And um, then I'm gonna get put the clarifiers down real quick too. And this is the hidden energy, something that you might not want to face right now. We have the uh, three of cups reversed. This could be that you know you've been having a lot of fun, you've been having a lot of fun. parties over, parties done. Okay, it's like you know you feel like, gosh, it's too much been going on. You get the ten. The Ten of Swords, which kind of means, I guess it feels like there's some type of betrayal. Or you feel like, oh my God, this is so done. Maybe it's some relationship that's, that you feel like is just not happening. The Ten of Cups reverse is you really are not getting what you want. This, this could have been something where you felt like this was your happiness. This is what, this. when I look at this card... This is the family card and just like getting everything that you want. When it's upside down, it's just like, it's not completed. It's something that you wanted that you didn't quite get. This is not how you imagine your life out to be. You have two tens, which means that there's a lot of completion, a lot of ending energy. Let's see what the clarifying cards have to say so I can get some clarity. Why is the three of cups reversed here? Why is the Ten of Swords here? Joy. Why is the Ten of Cups reversed here? Confusion. And why is the Five of Swords? Okay, so the overall energy right here, or the hidden energy, is the impatience card, okay? And it's coming with the five of swords, and it could be that you've been trying to make something happen, or you try so much that people have been pushed away, and it could be that you want it so bad, and I think that's a very Capricorn energy, is you want it so bad, you're like, I'm just going to do it myself. The universe has already said, hey, this is yours, you can have this, but instead of like trusting the universe, you've been just trying to force it, or the impatience card is like, I'm just kind of going to just try to do things to get it to happen on my own. I know I say make it happen, you know, but sometimes making it happen is also trusting the universe to bring it to you. And this person is not trusting the universe. They're trying to create a ladder to reach the stars, to reach this this goal that uh, that the universe has said, hey, this is yours already. But instead of waiting for it, this person is trying to make it happen. And because of that, people have walked off. It's because you're trying to force something to happen. What's happened here is um, I feel like there's been an overindulgence or something. Like somebody's been, maybe it's been too much drinking or too much, um, too much going on. The service card shows me that because of this, somebody has to always take care of the other person. So I don't know how this relationship could be you or the other person that you're dealing with. But either you're having to take care of somebody or somebody's having to take care of you. And you guys have this kind of spiritual bond. And you've had the spiritual bond in the past. But this, like one person is overindulging and doing too much. And the other person is like, oh, gosh, now I have to sit here and take care of you. And this is kind of like this long life spiritual kind of, um, it's a spiritual bond. But it's like this, this one person is having to take care of the other person after there's been too much going on. But they've devoted themselves to you. Or you've devoted them yourself to them. Either way, let me turn some lights on. I hope somebody got some clouds. <laughs> I have the windows open and the clouds start coming. It's like I'm finishing up. All right, so the ten of the ten of swords. So you've been dealing with this person, uh, or this relationship has maybe had a toxicity to it. Like there's somebody's just doing too much. Uh, maybe they're doing. Uh, uh, what I kind of feel is like. There's one person, like I said, if, it's, if, if it is like an alcoholic situation, this is not for every Capricorn. If it's like an alcoholic situation or a drug issue or something like that, 
and the person has and you're trying to make the relationship happen or you try or this other person's trying to make it happen and it's not happening so there's kind of this ending this ten of swords you're like oh gosh like for some of you for some of you with the walk away card it could have been you walking away or somebody else walking away and this created this ten of swords moment this ten of swords moment is like i'm done i'm done i'm not even dealing with this anymore so it's either you, somebody walked away from you and this created this ten of swords moment or you walked away from them and it created this ten of swords moment so presently um this got the joy card and i think the separation has created this this spirit of joy where you kind of feel like okay i feel a little free I feel a little free from the situation and it's created this new kind of beginning and you have a lot of new energy you have a new moon in the eighth house you also have another new moon in your belief system and learning and stuff so I can see that kind of happening like presently like maybe you let go of something or somebody let go of you and now you've got this new this new renewed joy now the thing is <laughs> what's happening even though you have this new renewed joy and stuff, there's still this, this lack of happiness. And it's this confusion that's still going on with you, Capricorn. And this confusion is on purpose. This is coming from the higher up. This is coming from the crown chakra. It's coming from spirit. Spirit is confusing you right now because even though you have joy, you still don't feel like you have everything that you want. This is not how you planned out life to be. It's like, uh, I'm not, I feel good with myself. I let go of this or somebody let go of me and I'm feeling good but I'm still not satisfied. I still don't have that happy ending that I want and I'm confused right now. And the, 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 the confusion is actually divinely ordered. It's divinely ordered because there's something that's not completed yet. There's still something that you need to learn. Um, so the electric spirit, <laughs> the electric eel spirit, is telling you to bring your ideas to life. And it's, it's really a proactive energy I feel like there's still like something not completely done. And let me get some clarity on that before I even say Give me some clarity. The tarot for the Ten of Cups reverse. Why are they confused? Oh. Okay, so we got the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands reverse. You could be dealing with a fire sign or, or somebody with a fire sign energy. Um, very feminine, strong. But with the Queen of Wands, her energy could be, what I kind of sense is it could be like a, a, you could be dealing with somebody who has a very strong sexual energy. You guys could probably have a, a uh, this person just has an attractive energy and you still want them because they have this attractive energy. Like, ooh, you know, um, it's the other person and it, it's, the other person that you're dealing with is is just kind of this attractive, kind of independent energy, and it's still attractive to you, and you still kind of want that. You kind of want that in your life, and then, but you feel like, how's that even fit in my life, you know? And maybe it's that they want this this kind of life for themselves, and you don't want that, or vice versa. But there's definitely some confusion of how you guys are are intermingling. Whew. I, and I still see like there's this old bond, like this old spiritual bond that you guys had. There's just been a lot of overindulgence. And what I, my advice to you, Capricorn, is that you got to you gotta chill on some level of trying to physically make this happen. The, the impatience energy. I feel like this can still happen if you want it to happen. It's just not going to happen the way you want it to, okay? So when you're trying to make things happen, you just really put it into the universe. It's like... Um, Whatever you pray to say, hey, this is what I want. This is how I manifest it. You're going to manifest anything. Do it on the beginning of the month, especially if the, since the new moon is in Leo in your eighth house. And it's dealing, dealing with your sexuality or somebody you've been sexual with and going to that deeper level. You just put the intention out there and then you let it go. Don't try to make it happen. Don't try to, to like, when I say make it happen, to, like, physically just try to force people to be with you because you're just going to run them off. It seems like you guys already have a bond and this person walked away or you walked away and you brought joy but you're still not happy that's reason why you're happy is because you guys definitely have a connection together this person has a very strong attractive energy it's just that you guys are on the flip side right now so just give it some time be patient and this bond will eventually come together on its own 
But the thing is, the work that you need to do to bring your ideas to life is that you probably need to work on yourself. Work on yourself, work on your knowledge, work on your learning, and put your intentions out there. And things will happen. Things will just happen. But I think it's more so working on yourself because all the energy for, for astrology is kind of this inner energy, self-energy, you know? So anyways, that's my advice for you, <laughs> Capricorn. If this resonates with you, please give me a like and a thumbs up. Remember, this is for Capricorn, Capricorn rising, Capricorn moon. If it does not resonate with you, please check your rising sign. Check your rising sign and your moon sign as you might get a, a broader picture of what's going on. Okay, guys? And subscribe to my videos. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on because if you don't do it, then who will? Talk to you guys later. Peace out.